Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we're going to have a look at all of the games we reviewed for last month, the month of course of October, remind ourselves of the scores they were given before ranking them from the lowest scoring game up to the highest. Now for a game to make this list of course we must have reviewed it, that goes without saying, and if I just take you back to September for a moment, which was an incredible month, where the lowest scoring game for that month to make the list actually got 82%, quite possibly the highest calibre of scores we've had in one month ever. This month's not quite the same, let's say that, but there are still some good releases for sure, so how did they score? Well, let's find out. Kicking us off this month then, the lowest rated game on the list was the Caligula Effect 2. This RPG joins its predecessor on the Switch and to be fair, does improve on some of the faults the first game suffered from. Story-wise, it's very similar. A virtual reality world called Redo has been created by a doll named Regret. However, this paradise is shaken when an idol breaks in into the program and restores a high school student's memories, leading to the formation of the Go Home Club as the students try to escape their virtual prison. You'll take on a number of main or side quests, initiating combat by running into enemies on the overworld, and the combat system is a particular strength of the game. There were a few odd design choices though, and graphically it doesn't look particularly appealing, and due to all of this, ultimately it probably lends itself more to being a pick up on sale game. It got a switch up score of 70%. In 8th place for the month was Merry Skelter Finale. This is a dungeon crawling RPG and concludes the Merry Skelter trilogy. Combat within the dungeon is fun and there is a lot of content here for sure, but the pace of the game felt a bit uneven at times, which did drag the experience down. Fans will no doubt be chomping at the bit to play this new edition and conclude the storyline, but it may be a bit too niche for the uninitiated. It got a switch up score of 75%. In 7th place was chronologically the final review for the month and this was Monster Crown. This is a monster catching and battling game although its story is quite adult in nature with you entering into a mutually beneficial pact with the monsters in the game rather than capturing them, more along the lines of Shin Megami Tensei in that respect. The battle mechanics and the whole contract or pact system is definitely enjoyable and fans of the monster catching genre will have a lot of fun. There were a few bugs in the game, nothing game breaking, but they did cause minor annoyances and the Switch version is a lot more expensive than other versions which is very frustrating and pushes it out of impulse buy territory. Probably one to wait for both a patch and a sale on, it got a Switch up score of 77%. In sixth place for the month was Project Zero or Facial Frame Maiden of Blackwater. This game first released for the Wii U back in 2014 and is the fifth main game in this particular series. This Switch port improved the resolution and added a new snap mode allowing you to take action photos within the game and the game itself is a very atmospheric ghost story where you must use the camera obscura to take photos of ghosts, exercising them in the process. Whilst the controls have been updated, allowing for you to use motion controls whilst in camera mode, they can't quite match the gamepad centric ones of the Wii U original and the controls in general are a bit clunky. Another negative was performance which while not detrimental to the gameplay itself, did suffer from frame drops and this was worse in handheld mode but the atmosphere created by the visuals, particularly the grainy cutscenes and the overall premise just make it so unique that any fan of horror will find a game worthy of a place in their Switch library. It got a Switch up score of 78%. In 5th place for the month was Disco Elysium The Final Cut. This is quite possibly one of the most unique games ever in some ways, with there being very little else like it. 
The game design is on another level with a host of ways that you can build your character in this non-traditional RPG where there is no combat and progress is instead handled via skill checks and dialogue trees. The issue here relates to performance with dynamic lighting used within the game which whilst helping to create a living breathing world does cause the frame rate to plummet and the game crashed a number of times. It's in need of a few patches in all honesty. A fantastic game which is let down by those issues and it's up to each individual of course as to whether they can look past these performance flaws or wait for it to receive said patches. Either way it got a switch up score of 83%. Coming in in 4th place for the month was Dying Light Platinum Edition. This open world survival horror game not only offers the thrill of a near death experience practically every time you leave the safe zone as you are presented with a horde of the undead, but there is also the quite exhilarating parkour movement system which allows for fast and fluid navigation of the buildings and landmarks that make up the world. There's a huge amount of DLC included and co-op is a lot of fun. Whilst there is a great deal of content here, it is still quite pricey and whilst performance is decent, hovering around the 30 to 40 FPS mark, the use of a fluctuating frame rate means that this does cause some stutters at times. A great game to have on a handheld though, it's pretty amazing it's possible to be fair and it got a switch up score of 84%. In third place was action platformer Flynn, Son of Crimson. You will find yourself traveling around a world map, navigating some well-designed levels and engaging in combat as you travel along. The weapons that you acquire are powered by the titular Crimson Energy and there is some nice variety in terms of these weapons plus the pixel art style is incredibly charming with a high level of detail and polish being displayed. On the more negative side there are a few difficulty spikes sometimes down to uneven checkpoint placement and there were a few minor frame drops at times but this was a very pleasant surprise and it got a switch up score of 85%. And then we have a tie for first place this month, so in joint first was Death's Gambit Afterlife. Death's Gambit actually released back in 2018, but received criticism for appearing unfinished and having some control issues. Well, this Afterlife edition fixes all of these issues and effectively doubles the size of the game. It's a Souls-like Metroidvania where you can choose one of several character classes, each tailored towards a particular playstyle. Ten new levels have been added and a refined mapping system makes traversal of the world much more enjoyable. You'll gain the ability to craft weapons and you can put points into individual weapons to improve their proficiency. Visuals perhaps lack a little bit of variety at times, but performance is very good and the music is top notch, and considering the vast improvements made, the price is incredibly fair. Overall this got a switch up score of 92%. And sharing that first place then, as I said, is Nintendo's own Metroid Dread. This particular Metroid game takes place after the events of the Game Boy Advance's Metroid Fusion and sees Samus stuck on a planet, trying to get back to her ship situated on the planet's surface, all the while being chased down by a number of deadly robots known as the Emmy. The world design is incredibly tight and you'll be able to open up more of the planet's areas as you gain back your suit's powers. The visuals have a beautiful fluidity to them which needs to be seen in action to be truly appreciated and the audio, whilst perhaps not as urgent for want of a better word as the score of previous games in the series such as Super Metroid, does a tremendous job of enhancing the world around you through the use of ambient sound plus the reuse of some previous tracks in a fresh way. Personally, I always want the use of a D-pad as an option in a 2D game, even if it's complemented with the stick for aiming refinement, say, and some people might want a longer play time for their money, although I was more than happy with the 12 to 15 hours it took me to finish it. Basically, I found this game an absolute delight from beginning to end, and again, it got a switch up score of 92%. So 
so there you have it there is a month's worth of reviews on the channel in one video for you did you pick any of these games up what did you think of them which game would have been your favorite for the month even if it's one we didn't review tell us all about it in the comments section a quick thank you to our patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos take care and until next time happy gaming